Hi, I'm Teresa and welcome to my channel. Today we're doing things a little bit differently and instead of books I'm going to be recommending you some TV shows and films but of course because it's me, because this is my channel, they are all sapphic and I have loved watching all of these. Some of these are my absolute favourite series or films so I'm just very very excited to talk to you about them today. So first up is possibly my favourite show ever and that is She-Ra and the Princesses of Power. This I watched in 2020 during lockdown and I just watched like oh five seasons in a one -er. in a couple of days. I had my my tablet with me at all times, it was never turned off, it was always on She-Ra. Like <laughs> when I went to shower I'd put it on the like surface to when I was getting ready to shower, turn it off to shower, turn it back on when I was getting out and drying myself off. Like it was on all the time. I just could not stop watching and I love the show so much. So to give a synopsis, this follows Adora who has been raised in this organization called the Horde, which is evil really, <laughs> you know, it's called the Horde and it's trying to take over the planet and take over all the magic of the natural goodness of the planet and Adora doesn't realize that it's a bad organization because you know she's been raised in it and she's been told that what they're doing is good but when one day her and her friend Katra go out to the horde on this little adventure and Adora sees how the rest of the planet lives how they live in fear of the horde and how the horde is destroying them and also finds a magic sword she begins to question everything she's ever known and and she ends up meeting Glimmer, a princess, and Bo, her friend, and she falls in with them and together they resurrect the Princess Alliance, this ancient organisation that tried to fight the Horde but fell apart when things went wrong. And this magic sword that Dora found turns her into She-Ra, this mythical, magical being, all-powerful. So as I've said, there are five seasons. They're, some of them are pretty short so it doesn't take too long to watch. The episodes I think are only a, like 20 30 minute long and you don't get to the sapphics until the end of the final season um but the build up over all five seasons with the friends to enemies to lovers immaculate i've i was rooting from them from the start i was just in awe and yeah you've also got side sapphic characters right from the beginning as well which is nice to see when the studio didn't let the creator put <laughs> make the main sapphic romance obvious until t towards the end but you know you do get the confirmation and it's lovely it's a it's a brilliant moment i can't explain more without spoilers but i love it <laughs> and yes this is technically a kids show so you know it's not heavy on violence or swearing or anything like that it is just lovely joyful feel good incredibly queer just camp like not necessarily always with queer characters though there are there's a side sapphic characters i've mentioned there's a non-binary character but there's also just a campness to it to all their outfits to everything that happens and i love it it's a fantastic show i so highly recommend you watch it it's on netflix i believe definitely in the uk but i don't know about elsewhere and you should watch it <laughs> next up is also another favourite of mine and that is Dairy Girls. So Dairy Girls currently has two seasons but the third one is releasing soon. They've just released a trailer. It looks incredible. I'm so excited. So this one takes place in the 90s in Derry in Ireland and at this point the troubles are happening and there's a lot of conflict um, here and you follow four girls just living right in the middle of this conflict and having to go about their daily, daily lives within it and when one of the girls cousin James an English guy joins the school they kind of have to take him in and there's a lot of like good banter between them all especially the English jokes which as a Scot I love <laughs> and it's just it's such a feel-good show as well it's a comedy and it's definitely actually funny and I just love it so so much like oh and like the, the aesthetic the outfits it's so good i want their wardrobes so badly but to get onto the sapphic so one of our main characters claire is a lesbian there's a 
episode kind of dedicated to her coming out and how you know friends deal with this and everything and for the rest of the series they're always all wearing little rainbow pins like for her and it's never addressed but it's just added to their clothes and I just thought that was such a nice touch like oh that's so cute and I just I love my dairy girls I'm so excited for season three it's gonna be so good but I'm so sad it's ending but I just love it <laughs> again this is on Netflix and it's also on channel 4 in the UK if you have access to that. Next up is a film that I really really love and that is Elisa y Marcela which is a Spanish film. Um, it's filmed in black and white though it came out quite recently so it's definitely just a stylistic choice and this follows a true story of the first two women to get married to each other in Spain. So it takes place at the early 20th century about 1901 and you follow the these two girls as they meet a few years previously going to school together and they have this instant connection but when Marcela's parents see how close they get they send her away to a school in Madrid and the two reunite once they're both qualified as teachers and they end up teaching just you know a little walk away from each other and they reconnect they their romance begins again and you follow them with this relationship but also dealing with period typical homophobia there is a lot of it i kind of forgot until i rewatched it last night how much homophobia there is so please don't go into this film lightly it's not pleasant at times though it ultimately has a very hopeful positive kind of ending you they go through it to get there um and as i said this is based on a true story it's not completely accurate i was doing some reading but you know the gist of it is there it's just maybe romanticized a bit more and made better for screen and i will also say something else i noticed on the rewatch there's some weird sex stuff i don't know if that was just part of their story or they added it in but it's a bit weird so like brace yourself for that as well i i have a funny feeling it was just added in for a certain target audience and it's just bizarre <laughs> i'm not saying what it is on this channel but you'll know if you watch it but yes I just adore this film it's so beautiful so touching these the story between these two women I again watched this one in 2020 I did a lot of watching and catching up on sapphic shows and films in 2020 I watched a lot of them with my friends so I have really fond memories of them and we watched this one together then we changed our profile pictures me to Martella and her to Elisa for a while on Twitter like I was obsessed with this film it is so good I just so thoroughly enjoyed it and recommend it it's not my usual type of film in that it's quite slow quite quiet very like a peaceful film until you get to the homophobia but I don't know it just worked for me and it's probably the only black and white film that I have ever enjoyed so take make of that what you will but yes I adore this film so highly recommend you watch it it is on Netflix Next up is another TV show and that is The Owl House. This one currently has two seasons and the third one is airing at the moment and this will be the final season so it's a great time to watch it and catch up with it. It's such a fun feel-good show as well. Like she this is intended for children but it works with wider audiences. It's just a whole lot of fun. So we follow Luce who is a bit of a weirdo she and she is obsessed with these magical fantasy books and when she like, accidentally stumbles into a fantasy world she just doesn't want to leave she meets a witch and she wants to be trained as a witch and so you follow her adventures in this world and also her learning to become a witch this is both under the tutelage of this witch she falls in with called Ida the owl lady I love her <laughs> and and then her also joining a magic school and meeting lots of little magic friends and it's just so fun and feel good and weird and it's like for all the little weird kids like oh, and as a former weird kid I love it <laughs> and yes Luce is bisexual and she has a lesbian love interest who has green hair and like is that not the representation that we need <laughs> a kind of greeny blue haired lesbian and then it comes purple in season two like I love them together they have such a sweet little romance again 
it's a kids show so it's kids friendly it's like lots of blushing and first crushes and all of that cuteness i love it and unlike she they were able to make this more explicitly queer which is lovely to see and yeah i'm just so happy it exists i believe it's on disney plus in the states at least i'm not sure if it is elsewhere um yeah <laughs> it's a fantastic fantastic show wacky and weird and heartwarming and just charming and i so completely recommend it i'm so excited to be watching season three <laughs> so excited the next show I want to talk about is The Wilds. So this one is on Amazon Prime, I believe, and it's only got one season at the moment. The second one is in development. I'm not sure what stage it's at. And this follows a group of girls who all head onto this like summer retreat for mental health and everything. Most of them aren't exactly willing participants. And they're playing crash lands and they are stranded on an island. And you follow them all these completely different girls from different backgrounds with their own different problems having to get along and survive together. There's a lot of conflict, a lot of like mistrust, but also friendship. And you have got two, I believe, sapphic characters. There's maybe a hint of romance there. Very excited to see how that continues in the second season. The first one left off on <laughs> such a good cliffhanger. I, I need to know what happens next. <laughs> And yes, I just loved this series. Again, it's one that I just marathoned. I couldn't put it down. It's not too long, but it's so much fun. And you just feel for all these girls and what they're going through. And like the, the characters are all so like different to each other and some of them fit stereotypes and then debunk those stereotypes. And it just, oh, I love it. I love it so, so, so much. It's so good. Next up is a more recent favourite of mine and that is Arcane, which is kind of based on League of Legends. I think it's like a prequel story. You don't have to know anything about League of Legends though, I certainly don't. But this is animated, it's got the most gorgeous, gorgeous animation style and it, I think it's won awards for it and it deserves it. And unlike the other animated ones I've said, this one is not a kids show. I've tried to describe this show so many times just for like one other video and a few times just now and I just don't know how to describe it because there's like a lot going on but bear with me okay so this is set in these kind of like twin cities you've got the under city which is quite deprived it's got a bit of a cyberpunk vibe but it's cool um and then the kind of gleaming jewel the upper city and you follow characters from the under city and these are two sisters, Vi and Powder. In the first kind of three episodes, you follow the kind of before and then, then the last six in the present. And in the before, the two sisters are separated and they go down very different paths. And when you meet them again in the present, they almost, they almost have to work against each other because they've fallen onto different sides of this brewing war between the Undercity and the Upper City and this this drug that's taking control of the undercity that the upper city is trying to stop and Vi who's the older sister she is sapphic and she ends up working with this girl called Caitlin from the upper city and there's a lot of like clashing because of their different backgrounds but they work together there's some flirting Vi calls her cupcake there's no explicit explicit sapphicness but they're very very much sapphic coded very much confirmed by the team that that was intentional and that there will be more in season two just once they know each other a bit better i imagine and i just fell in love with this series so much i loved the tension and the dynamic between caitlin and vi and i just love vi's little sister powder and like her character i can't say too much about without being spoilery but she's such a fun character and oh, it's just the the relationship, the strain between her and Vi when they reconnect and oh, I love it. It's such a good show. Again, as I said, absolutely beautiful drawing and animation. I, before I watched all of these shows I mentioned, I was like, I wouldn't enjoy animated shows. <laughs> like that's for kids. I stand very, very much corrected. I love these so much that you, they convey such a like emotion and everything so well. 
they're so beautiful to watch i i'm just in love and i so highly recommend you check them out there's only one season of arcane available at the moment with the second one currently in development i don't know anything about release dates or anything for that though and it's available on netflix next up is yet another animated kids show <laughs> and that is legend of korra so this is the kind of spin-off series to avatar the last airbender and it takes place in this world where people are gifted with the power to control one of the four elements fire water air and earth and every generation there is a avatar who is born who has the power to control all four and in the first series, Avatar The Last Airbender, we follow Aang and his little crew as they save the world, stop the Fire Nation from expanding and taking over everything. And then once Aang dies, a new Avatar is born and that is Korra, who we follow in the sequel series. So Legend of Korra takes place years after this and it's got this amazing kind of aesthetic and setting to it, which is like kind of like 1920s vibes, like that kind of decade when Avatar had been kind of pre-technology almost so like there's been a lot of development since then and I loved the setting when I first watched the first episode and I was like unsure about all these new characters I was like I love the setting I can get behind this and so you follow Korra, Asami and two guys brothers I've forgotten their names I feel very very bad but they all kind of end up becoming friends and working together to stop all the bad things happening in this world and Korra and Asami do have a bit of a romance towards the end. It There's nothing too explicit, though it was confirmed later that it was meant to be, but you know, production companies weren't happy with it. Um, but it does continue into comics if you're interested and that does have explicit romance. But yes, I just thought this was such a fun twist on like the same world as Avatar and you see some familiar faces from the series as well, which I loved. And again, you know, I just loved the vibes, the friendship between all of them. It's messy and it's complicated, but it's so, so fun. And it's just a good, fun show. I really, really enjoyed it. If you've not, if you've watched Avatar and not watched this, get on it. If you've not watched either, watch them both. They're both amazing. This is available on Netflix, I believe. Next up is Euphoria. Now imagine if you've spent any time on Twitter recently, you know about Euphoria. It is everywhere when the new season is airing and that's what finally convinced me to start watching it. And I was not disappointed. I thoroughly, thoroughly enjoyed my time. The second season has just finished airing, so it's a good time to watch and catch up now. Um, so this follows Rue, who's played by Zendaya, and she's an addict and struggling with addiction. And she meets new girl at school, Jules, and the two kind of instantly have this connection, this friendship, which develops into something more. So yes, you get to see Zendaya kiss a woman. It is glorious and worth watching for that alone. And all of the characters in this show are all going through something themselves. It's, this show's kind of aim is to show what teenagers go through, but it's also like the worst of what teenagers go through and it gets quite dark there's lots of explicit drug abuse alcohol abuse assault sex everything just be aware of that before you watch it there's full frontal nudity there's not a show in the world where i've seen that many penises but they do kind of calm down with that and it, and it gets back to the story which is very much appreciated but still worth watching if that doesn't put you off too much and I just really enjoyed my time watching this. You have got other side characters I've mentioned and you see a lot more of them in season two. Um, especially if you've been on Twitter, you'll have seen Cassie, Maddie, Nate, the drama there. It was very entertaining for me. <laughs> but the, Rue remains the main character and I there's this episode, I think episode five in the second season, Zendaya's acting. Holy shit, it was incredible. It, it just blew me away. It's so damn good. It's got amazing camera angles. It's so pretty to look at. And Jules, who is Rue's love interest, she's played by Hunter Schaefer, who's a trans woman, and Jules herself is also trans. And you just see her like taking her hormone injection and everything just so naturally on the screen. And 
I just love it. That's amazing. And just seeing all of these characters be messy as well. Just, <laughs> just so ridiculously messy characters. They fuck up, they make mistakes. And the show's unapologetic about that. I loved it. It's just, if you like drama, you need to watch it because it's just pure, pure drama. It's a lot, a lot of fun. But please be aware going into this that it does deal with heavy topics. So don't go into this lightly or expecting just fun drama. Like that's what I enjoy about it. But I also appreciate how it deals with much more sensitive, more heavy themes. So please just be aware of that before going into it. And the final show I want to talk about is Gentleman Jack. So this currently has one season out, the second season will be airing in April, they've released the trailer, it looks so good. I watched this one very very recently and I actually watched it with my mum. We've been saying we're going to watch it together since the first season came out, which was around the time that I came out, and then we never got round to it until recently, but we just flew through it, we had so much fun with it. I just so thoroughly enjoyed watching it. So Gentleman Jack follows a true story, it follows Anne Lister who kept very very detailed coded diaries of her life, her explorations with lesbianism, her being a businesswoman kind of defying all these gender norms of her time period which was like the early 19th century and Gentleman Jack follows her and her character just existing and running her estate, she gets into different businesses but also you follow her meeting and falling in love with Anne Walker who uh, Lister then married and the two obviously didn't marry legally but they are considered to have had the first lesbian marriage they took all the vows in the sacrament without having the paper to prove it and I just adored watching this I loved the two characters the romance between them I did not like the hairstyles but I liked Anne Walker's dresses and everything something I love about watching like TV and film set in different periods is the outfits and I find that so fun like I recently watched Bridgerton love their outfits but yes it was just such a good show it also deals with Anne Walker's mental health I think she has what we'd call now depression and you see her struggling with it and how this influences their relationship and everything and it's just such a gorgeous story so touching and I'm very very excited for the second season to be coming out it's just ah uh, so good <laughs> and yes that has been all of these shows and films I want to recommend to you I might do a second part to this once I've watched more so definitely if there's anything you want to see me watch and talk about leave suggestions down below I'm always open to them and let me know if you've watched any of these yourself what you think of them whatever I just want to talk about these shows and films I love them <laughs> So as always, you will find links to all of my social media down below if you want to keep up with me elsewhere. My Instagram, my Twitter, my TikTok, my Goodreads, whatever. I'm probably talking about sapphic books. Come join the fun. And if you liked this video, please consider leaving a like, commenting, subscribing, all of that good stuff. I'd really appreciate it. And yes, just thank you very, very much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed and I'll see you in another video soon.